How do you guide an AI to do something perfectly if even you don't know what perfect looks like? It's one of those things that when you see it, you'll know it, but you'll have to see it first. This is where reverse meta prompting can help and come to your rescue. It'll allow you to have back and forth conversations with any large language model and be able to reverse engineer it into effective and precise prompts one step at a time. If we haven't met yet, my name is Mark and I've been running my own AI automation agency called Prompt Advisors for the past two years. We work with all industries to implement AI in their business where it makes sense. If you've consumed any of my content from before, you'll see that I've done extensive tutorials on meta prompting in very different applications. And this is yet another application that I realized was missing from the stack that I already came up with. The best part of this strategy is it's so easy to implement and anyone can do it with practically any large language model. I'm gonna walk through the big picture of what reverse meta prompting is, and we're gonna apply it to three different use cases so we can actually see it in action. As usual, the prompt I'll be going through will be in the description below, so stay tuned to see how we actually use it. All right, so if you've ever used anything like ChatGPT or Claude before, you'll be super familiar with the typical way that we prompt, which is we send one huge prompt, ideally with our menu items of everything we're looking for for that dream outcome, and then we hope that some output comes out to our satisfaction. And a lot of the videos that I've been filming operate on this assumption that you know what you want and all you have to do is translate that into a prompt. But many times, if you're experimenting to see what can be done with AI for your specific use case, you don't know whether or not prompting is the best way to do it. You don't know if large language models can help you go from A to B, and you need to experiment to see what works and what doesn't before you come to your final conclusion. So this vanilla case is ideal, but not necessarily what you can start with sometimes. Now, the second case is something that I just recorded a video on a few days ago called chain prompting, where pretty much, not to repeat myself, you have a series of mini prompts, all of which specialize in one main task, that feed one into the other. And the goal of chain prompting is because each prompt has such a small task that the likelihood for it to hallucinate is much lower and you usually get much better outcome. But again, this is founded on the basis that you know what your process is and you know what success looks like and you're just trying to piecemeal your way there. Reverse meta prompting is probably something you've already been doing but it's all about being intentional in the way you do it to get the best outcomes possible. So the idea with reverse meta prompting is that you start with some sort of prompt, something directionally accurate to where you're trying to go. Like write me a story, write me an email. I am a social media manager. I'm trying to automate X posts or Instagram posts, etc. So you need some form of North Star at least to start with. And the idea is as ChatGPT or Claude or whichever LLM continues to fail to meet your expectations, you give it some feedback. And as it outputs another iteration, you give it some more feedback. And the idea is that you keep doing this until you're satisfied or ideally it's exceeded your expectations and you got the output that you're looking for. This is the critical point where reverse meta prompting comes into play. All you have to do is write a prompt at the very end of the conversation, once you've actually gotten what you're looking for, and you say, you know what, act as a prompt engineer, go through this entire conversation and capture the nuances of the feedback that I gave you to try to reverse engineer the dream outcome that you just outputted for me. Obviously, again, disclaimer here, the assumption that I'm making is that you finally got to your dream outcome after X amount of iteration. If you haven't, this won't be that helpful. But if you have, it's a solid way to be able to have ChatGPT look back and take advantage of the fact that you created a thread and use that thread as the ideal model for success. Now, if it seems a bit hazy, we're gonna go through three separate examples that are really gonna drive the point home. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to go through three separate examples of how to make this work. And my feedback to the initial prompts are all gonna be spontaneous, just to really capture the essence of what we're going for here. All right, so for the first one, I'm not gonna read the whole prompt because it's a bit long, but overall it's, I am the social media manager at Ego Frogs, a brand that sells eco-friendly products for the environmentally conscious and slightly quirky. And the rest of it pretty much is gonna say, create a content calendar for Ego Frogs, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter accounts for the next month, include post ideas, yada, yada, yada. So we're just gonna send this as an initial prompt and we are gonna get some form of response that we're going to give feedback to. And while this is producing, I'm just gonna show you this little feature here. You probably would have seen it by now in ChatGPT. Sometimes it actually does this memory updated little icon, which means it's stored in memory, some form of preference that it's picked up on. A lot of times it's helpful, sometimes it's not. So I don't necessarily want to remember 
about eco frogs moving forward unless I really want it to. So if you want to clear that out, just a little bit of a FYI, you can go to settings, then you can go to personalization, and then you can clear ChatGPT memory to make sure that your prompts are not really influenced by something extraneous from what you're actually writing. At the same time, uh, an additional hack on the other side is, let's say you always want the prompts you create to always have multiple examples. You can go in here and go to manage and you can say, if it'll let me just dive in. All right, so you can see here, it has like all these preferences. So you can see here, it says prefers examples and prompts to be written in first person, making them actionable and realistic. So uh, I'm gonna delete all of these here, by just doing again, clear. There we go. And we could probably add in a brand new memory that says always create multi-shot prompts when I ask you to prompt. Uh, but that's a little bit of FYI you can use for later on in the video when I show you how to actually use this. Okay, so let's look at the actual output from this prompt. We pretty much have a weekly calendar with content by day telling us exactly what we should be doing for that. And let's say for me to augment this, I want to say, let's say only day one and day five should be on the content calendar. And I want you to actually write the collateral for the posts we'll be making by platform. So I'll just use my little handy voice assistant. All right, this is a good start, but can we make sure that it only is for day one and day six and that everything that you tell me in those content calendar bullets are actual examples of what I should be writing. So actually write the posts by platform instead of telling me what to do. So a bit sassy on my end, but ideally this will now start creating the post end to end, write the actual content for it and the collateral, and that'll be a bit easier. All right, so it's done generating and we have day one, day six, and we have posts for each one. But one thing I noticed now is it was doing it before by platform and by day, and right now it's just doing day one and day six as the headers and then the platforms as sub bullets under that, which is not necessarily what I want. So I'll now give it another piece of feedback. Okay, so you did a great job actually writing out the posts, but I want you to go back to categorizing everything by the platform and then creating a day one, day six post per platform instead of you just saying day one and day six and then listing the platforms nested underneath. So with this, hopefully we should just get the actual platform and then day one day six platform posts for that and we'll see here we have day one we have day six it's better organized and after this i'm going to get to the real point of the video which is how do we do this and actually use this reverse meta prompt to go back through all the context of the conversation to create a prompt that would get to this output in one shot so what i'm about to copy paste is the exact prompt i'm going to use for the other two examples the other ones will go a bit quicker with but in general, it's gonna be this. And I'll just delete a little copy paste here. It's gonna be act as a prompt engineer, go through this conversation and create a detailed prompt in Markdown in a code block that summarizes all the feedback I gave you leading to the final result above. So again, the contingency here is that you finally get to your desired outcome eventually in this chat. And then the final part is include the successful example above as an example for the prompt. So we're basically saying create a multi-shot prompt. Like I said before, on the memory front, if you've already told your ChatGPT memory, hey, when I ask you to create a prompt, always make it have multiple examples, then you might not need that final portion of this prompt here. If not though, and you wanna make sure that you're always creating vanilla prompts that aren't influenced from elsewhere, then make sure to include this part here. So I'm just going to send it, and this is the result that we get, and it's very detailed prompts like we're used to seeing in my other videos. And in this case, it included the example response that we just got as the ideal and exemplary response. So if we just take a quick look at this in a Google Doc, just to better look at it. Yeah, so we'll see here, you are a social media content strategist for EcoFrogs, a brand that sells eco-friendly products for environmentally conscious and slightly quirky consumers, yada, yada, yada. Here are the requirements by platform, content days. It's capturing day one and day six of the month. It has that specificity we talked about, tone and style, and then we actually have the example that we just went through. So if we take this prompt here and we go back into ChatGPT and we create a brand new session and just paste this, we should get something along the lines of what we just got as an output. And obviously what we do wanna do here is just configure it so you can change any components that you're looking for. But we were able to reverse engineer our process for success and we get exactly what we're looking for in one shot by just going through the entire end-to-end -end process. So I'm gonna do two more examples a bit quicker just to reinforce the point and drive it home. And this will add 
yet another tool in your toolbox for how to go about coming up with the best prompts for the best projects. All right, for the next two examples, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go slightly a bit faster and I already had a conversation where I went back and forth. So I'm gonna walk through the finished conversation just to show you how we would replicate this process for a different scenario. So in this case, I say that I am the marketing manager at Gadget Gurus, where we're about to launch our latest innovation, the RoboMop 3000, a mop that lets you clean your floors and serenades you with elevator music. And here we're just saying, help me identify a target audience help me break them down by demographics, psychographics, and lifestyle factors. So initially, it does a decent job of breaking them down, primarily in bullet form, in terms of everything from urban dwellers to pet owners. It comes up with a secondary audience. And then I say, could you vary the format of this? So it's not just bullets, and can you maybe throw in some tables so there's not a lot more interactive mix in the writing between short and long form sentences, bullets and tables and it's a lot more visually appealing so then it takes that into account it starts mix and matching some tables into the actual output with some bullets where it makes sense and then my feedback is so in terms of psychographic traits which we outline up here music lovers aesthetic conscious and eco-conscious I basically ask it hey let's create it a little visualization like a bar chart and give me your estimate based on all of your experience with this kind of product where we might land in terms of the number of people that fall in each of these buckets for music lovers aesthetics eco-conscious etc so if we go down on the first iteration of this it just outputs the bar chart itself it doesn't actually output the entire thing end to end which is what we want right because we want to go back and say hey the thing that you just did above that's example of perfect, let's turn that into a prompt. So because we were just given the graph here, I had to lecture it and say, this is bad. This is a great graph, but I need you to create the entire report end to end. So then it creates this report. And at the very end, it throws in this bar chart, which is pretty cool because as of like a month or a month and a half ago, you can now interact with these charts and actually click on certain things depending on the visualization. And then I asked it to use that same prompt we used in scenario number one, which is act as a prompt engineer and go through the conversation, take all the context, spit out an actual prompt. So it does that and it's a bit less beefy than the prior one. But one question that I posed to myself is what if I wanted to apply this to different scenarios where I wanted this prompt to not just iteratively output the same thing over and over, but I want some form of ability to intervene, right? So using a variable to configure it so that if I want to change the focus of this prompt, but have like the majority of it structure it in the right way, that it's easy to do so. So if we go to the bottom here, I say this is a great prompt. I want you to keep everything, but I want you to add a small component that's basically a variable. And in this case, I just told it, use your judgment as to what you think might make the most sense as a variable to configure this. And it came up with the exact same prompt, but at the bottom, it says lens or focus, and it's a variable to customize the analysis, which can include specific geographic, different product variations, alternative customer segments, etc. And if we actually went into the prompt itself here, you'll see under the fifth one, which is customizable perspective, it'll say a new point, which is tailor the entire analysis based on the specified lens or focus, which could include specific regions, product variations, etc. everything that we just saw below. So that's a small tidbit hack on how to actually take this reverse prompt and make it now configurable. So we're going from reverse to meta prompt and now from meta prompt to ideal meta prompt. We'll just go through one more example to show what it looks like when you're having an interactive conversation using actual data. So for the last one, I used ChatGPT in another session to actually generate dummy data that we can use. So if we double click this, you'll see what it looks like. We have the date, product, region, units sold and revenue. Obviously, this is all made up, but I asked it to have diverse dates so we could do some form of time series based analysis. And then we have different products here like coffee warmer, squirrel feeder, etc. So initially, all I asked it to do is I said, I'm the sales manager at Widgetworks, a company that makes and sells quirky custom made widgets for tech enthusiasts. And I say I need to create a monthly sales report to present at our, at our all hands meeting. And I just give it the data and I just say summarize it. For the monthly data, highlighting total sales, top three best-selling widgets, and the sales breakdown by region. And then we get something like this here, where it gives me an overall breakdown using a CSV, and then it summarizes it verbally. Now, my next feedback 
is basically saying good job. But I also want to add in addition to month over month, I want to do week over week comparison. And similar to a last scenario, it just outputs the week over week sales summary instead of redoing the whole thing end to end. So again, small hack here. If you want to avoid this iterative process where you have to keep telling it over and over again, you can just say in another window, if I open this up here, so what we can do is tell ChatGPT just to remember moving forward that every time we are in a scenario where we're going back and forth, that we output the entire output in addition to our new ask. Hey, so I want you to commit this to memory. Every time that I'm going back and forth with you and I'm giving you feedback as to what you should add to your output, not necessarily edit in the existing output, but more so add and keep everything the same, that I don't want you to just output what I asked you for, but I want you to output the whole output in addition to what I asked you for. So if we just frame it in that way, typically, like it did right now, it'll understand that it's something you want to remember. So moving forward, hopefully you shouldn't have to have that constant back and forth that you're seeing me struggle with right now. So if we go back, in this case, I told it this is great, but ideally I want this in an actual table format. I want the entire report end to end, and I don't want it in like an interactive CSV that it's doing right now. So if we go down here, we get the entire sales report again, and then we have the week over week comparison broken down in an actual table format within the UI. And now we have something that is quote unquote good. So now I'll use that prompt one more time, and then you'll get the output which is very well structured. We have the example here of what it should look like. And just like we did in the last scenario, should you wanna add different variables, which would be probably super helpful for this one, like which month are we talking about? Which segments are we worried about? So those kinds of things can become variables. And now all you can do is just take the code, open a brand new session, use it to your heart's content, and you're good to go from there. And that's pretty much it from a concept perspective. This is something that you can use pretty much right away today and use it to actually take all your conversations that you've had in the past that you keep using over and over again and having to re-coach GPT every single time. Um, and given that it's more dynamic and maybe too dynamic for a custom GPT, you can use it to really 10X yourself in terms of the way you go about replicating your prompting process. And if you want access to the specific prompt that I used, you can find it in the link in the description below. And other than that, please subscribe, like, and I'll see you next time.